Because of their forbidden affair, a man and his stepmother become the possible suspects for the father's unexpected death. After Holden receives a sudden phone call from his estranged father, he visits him. He perceives this as somewhat of an opportunity since he has nowhere to go after traveling to Europe. Upon entering the mansion, Holden affectionately hugs his childhood housekeeper, Madeline. Then, he asks about Mason's whereabouts, and Madeline tells him he's upstairs. Holden goes to Mason's room and calls his father, but he isn't answering. Strangely, he hears the water running in the bathroom, so he checks if his father is inside. Instead of Mason, Holden comes across a woman, surprising him. Immediately, he leaves just in time for Mason to enter his room. He happily greets his son and expresses his fondness for him. He apologizes to Holden for being unable to attend his graduation, explaining that the union was pressuring him to work harder on his business. Excitedly, he knocks on the bathroom door to summon the woman earlier. Mason proudly introduces her as Lana, his lover. Holden wonders about how long they've been dating, but Mason clarifies they're actually married. Later in the living room, Holden asks why Mason didn't disclose such an important milestone with him beforehand. Mason simply replies that he wants to surprise him and see the look on his face. With his silence, Mason becomes concerned, so Holden voices he's still surprised by the revelation. That night, Holden attends Mason's fundraising event where his father introduces him to his lawyer, Harry Dupree. Once the introductions are exchanged, Mason boasts that his son is a Harvard graduate and proceeds to belittle Harry's alma mater, Yale. Harry swiftly brushes it off and reminds him they have to deal with their guests. Mason orders Lana to show Holden around and the woman gladly accepts. Now alone, Lana compliments Holden's good looks, which leads her to ask whose heart he broke in college. Shyly, Holden admits that he and his ex-girlfriend, Stacy, broke each other's hearts. Afterward, Holden apologizes for barging into the bathroom earlier. Lana silences him, emphasizing that it'll be their secret. At the time of the auction, Lana eyes the antique necklace on stage and approaches Harry to talk about it. However, Mason sees their closeness, sparking his jealousy. Lana returns to Holden with Nicole and introduces them to each other, hoping they'll be a perfect match. Following the auction, Lana expresses her appreciation for Mason since he bought the necklace for her. Mason disregards her words and confronts her for being cozy with Harry. Lana denies his allegations, but Mason believes she's flirting with his associate. During his fury, he begins to hurt Lana in front of Holden, leading his son to voice his discomfort. Lana insists there's nothing malicious between them, causing Mason to yield. The next day, Lana brings Holden to her favorite bar to hang out since Mason canceled his plans with them. Sadly, the bar is closed, so Holden suggests they find another. Lana refuses and begins to search through the bushes for the keys. Once she retrieves them, Lana informs him that the bar's owner is actually her friend. During their time together, Lana encourages Holden to drink more. Since both of them are tipsy, the lingering tension between them becomes apparent. However, Lana notices that the bar's caretaker is around, so she orders Holden to clean up and hide under the bar counter. The caretaker proceeds to enter the establishment and heads to the DJ station to turn off the music. With a quick once-over, the man leaves, making Holden relieved. Again, the pair lock eyes, and Holden comments that what they're feeling is wrong. Still, they can't resist the temptation and they allow themselves to enter a forbidden affair. Back home, Mason watches over as Lana and Holden arrive at the mansion. The following morning, Holden joins Lana for breakfast and he notices a glaring bruise around her wrist. As if nothing happened, Mason joins his family at the table in a chipper mood. He alerts Holden that he invited Nicole to dinner, believing they'll be a match. That day, Mason socializes with his son by playing basketball. Holden's upset since Mason repeatedly beats him in basketball. Determined to win, Holden swiftly steals the ball from him. Mason isn't fond of losing, so when Holden's about to shoot the ball, he punches his flank. By the evening, Lana approaches Holden in the kitchen to check on him. Holden confronts her about the bruise on her wrist, but she dismisses it. This sparks Holden's repressed disdain toward his father, especially since Mason treated her mother terribly. Now, he is furious that he is repeating the same toxic habit with Lana. A brief silence ensues between them, and Lana apologizes for sleeping with him. Holden doesn't demonize her since he consented to the act. Still, she insists he should forget about it, but he refuses. Desiring her, Holden initiates making love with her, and she gives in. The next morning, Mason's away, allowing Lana and Holden to continue their affair. While enjoying each other's company, Lana shares her sob story with him. Sometime in the past, Lana's father took advantage of her, but when he also showed interest in her sister, Lana orchestrated his death without deeming her the culprit. She decided to pack a bottle of whiskey with his lunchbox. Since he has alcoholism, this resulted in him passing out and falling over his boat. Later that night, the Price family entertains Nicole after dinner, and Mason urges her to share her career prospects. Nicole proudly reveals that she wants to be a broadcast journalist. This time, Mason questions Holden about his plans, and he expresses his desire to study architecture. Unfortunately, Mason disapproves of this, believing that such a degree 
is useless. Instead, he advises Holden to join him in managing his company. Due to Mason embarrassing him, Holden converses with Lana, telling her that he wants to leave Chicago. Lana opines that Mason simply offered him a job, but Holden clarifies it's a way for his father to control him. Anxious, Lana refuses to be left behind and asks about his plan for her. When Holden remains silent, she starts making love with him. The next morning, Mason takes Holden into the woods to hunt. As they're heading to the hunting ground, Mason asks his son if he knows what Lana's doing whenever he's away for work. Holden feigns innocence, so he simply moves on. During their hunt, an upset Holden aims his gun on his oblivious father's head. Though wanting to eliminate him, he abruptly stops. A while later, Mason goes to the living area after his workout. Holden volunteers to prepare his usual protein shake, much to his father's gratitude. Once Holden hands him his shake, Mason confides in him about his suspicions that Lana is cheating. Holden is visibly nervous, but he insists that he doesn't know Lana's affairs. With Mason's growing distrust of Lana, Holden summons her to a motel room to end their affair. Still, Lana wants to continue it, suggesting that they can be more discreet. Holden tells her he's leaving, but she refuses to let him go. Without a choice, Holden gets up to leave, but Lana begs him to stay. Weak to her pleas, Holden gives in and allows her to seduce him. By night, Holden awakens alone and discovers Lana's scribble in the mirror. He heads to the motel reception to check out, but it's closed. When he's about to leave, he comes across a homeless man who begs money from him. Holden doesn't hesitate to spare him some money. Back in their residence, Holden pours himself a drink when he notices their house is trashed and Mason's lifeless body is lying on the ground. Upon the authorities' arrival, they begin an initial investigation and discover that Mason was stabbed four times with an unserrated blade. Detective Clarkson and Lieutenant Mormino decide to seek Holden to interrogate him at their station. But before they proceed, Detective Clarkson also wishes to have Lana's testimony. She asks Holden if he knows his stepmother's whereabouts, but he denies it. As if she's summoned, Lana appears with a confused expression. At the police station, Holden lies to the authorities that he was watching The Godfather at the theater at the time of Mason's death. Meanwhile, Lana says that she went shopping and headed to Nicole's apartment. After the interrogation, Harry informs the pair that their residence will be available when the investigation's complete. In the meantime, he offers them to reside in his house. In Harry's house, Lana informs Holden that Nicole videotaped their intimacy and is demanding $100,000 for it. Holden becomes anxious, but Lana assures him she'll protect him. On the day of Mason's funeral service, Harry speaks to Holden about Mason. He believes that he married Lana to regain his youth. Holden asks Harry's perspective on Lana being the possible culprit for his father's death. Instantly, Harry dismisses the possibility since her testimony was proven true. Moreover, with Lana's size, Harry hypothesizes she can't overpower Mason. For him, someone else might have committed the crime, and he might be Lana's lover. When their conversation's finished, Holden interacts with Lana, and the woman thinks he's the culprit for Mason's death. Despite bearing such thought, she promises to protect him from getting his name tainted. Holden denies killing his father and accuses her as the culprit. Confidently, Lana explains it's impossible since she was with him and Nicole on the night of Mason's death. Holden remains skeptical, voicing that she must have had someone else's help. His offensive remark hits Lana, but she simply lets it slide. One day, Holden follows Lana to her meeting place with Nicole. He demands the tape from her, but the woman quickly gets inside the car. Lana reprimands him for his brashness, emphasizing that he's ruining their negotiation. Angrily, she gets inside Nicole's car, leaving a frustrated Holden behind. Suddenly, Holden receives a phone call from Harry, urging him to visit the lawyer. In Harry's study, the man confronts Holden for lying in his testimony, especially since the theater Holden allegedly visited has problems showing the film. This leads him to assume that Holden has a motive, knowing he'll gain a lot from his father's death. Baffled, Holden asks for clarification about what he means, so Harry mentions Mason's will. According to the document, Holden is his primary and sole beneficiary. While at it, Harry plays the tape that contains Lana and Holden's intimate moment. He informs Holden that he received the tape from an unknown sender this morning. Now cornered, Harry pressures Holden to tell him the truth. Holden admits that he slept with Lana at the motel for the last time since he wants to end their affair. But once he returned home, he stumbled upon Mason's body. Harry asks if Lana was with him the whole time, but he dismisses the idea, explaining that she was missing after he woke up. Still skeptical, Harry asks if there's someone who can testify that he's indeed at a motel. Since the receptionist was closed at that time, Holden announces that the homeless man he met can identify him. Harry proceeds to ask who might have sent the tape to him. Holden tells him that Nicole did, who's using it as blackmail in exchange for money. Despite this, Harry hypothesizes Lana is the culprit. For him, Lana intends to publicize the tape to strengthen the idea that it's Holden's motive to kill his father. If Holden's imprisoned, Lana will get all of Mason's assets. Later on, Harry accompanies Holden to his car and advises him not 
out to confront Lana. He adds that he should pack his things and stay with him in the meantime. That night, Holden returns home and notices that one of Mason's katanas is missing. Curious, Holden goes to Mason and Lana's room where he locates his stepmother's handbag. Holden discovers a stack of money and a gun inside. Lana approaches him and calmly explains that the money is for Nicole, whereas the gun is for self-defense. Outside the residence, Holden loads his bag on his car when he hears a strange noise in their garage. As he enters the room, Holden heads to Mason's convertible and discovers a death note disguised as if he authored it. In the letter, the author makes it appear that Holden admitted to killing his father out of jealousy and that he'll be ending his own life. At that moment, Lana appears and searches for the intruder. Holden tries to hide, but he bumps into a rack, causing Lana to shoot in his direction. Terrified, he hides, but Lana keeps a close eye on him. To divert her attention, Holden opens their garage door. Then, he tackles Lana to the ground and grabs her gun. Lana begs for her life and clarifies it's all just a mistake. A broken-hearted Holden releases her, allowing Lana to express that she thought he was a prowler. Despite her explanation, Holden confronts her for creating a death note under his name. Lana denies it and voices that Holden's accusations are starting to scare her. Holden's still doubtful, but she insists she's telling him the truth. When Holden's unconvinced, Lana approaches him and professes her love for him. In return, he apologizes to her. After interacting with Lana, Holden rushes to Harry's residence and shows him his computer, where Lana used to write the note. The next day at the police station, Holden recounts what has truly transpired regarding his father's death. Inside the detective's office, Detective Sykes refuses to believe Holden's testimony, believing he's killed Lana since she went missing. With this in mind, Lieutenant Mormino informs them that Nicole is also missing. This seals Detective Sykes' decision. Holden is the killer. Due to his orders, the two detectives arrest Holden. The next morning, Lieutenant Mormino informs Detective Clarkson that Lana has fled to Venezuela. At first, they're only starting to be suspicious of Lana, but their hunch becomes more apparent when Nicole visits the station to give her testimony. Testimony. According to her, she and Lana are actually lovers. She agreed to help her in blackmailing Holden since he has a trust fund. Nicole reveals that Lana promised they'll be together once their scheme succeeds. However, one night, Lana showed up at her apartment covered in Mason's blood. Detective Clarkson asks if she knows where the weapon's located, but Nicole denies it. She tells her that Lana hid it in an unknown place. Even with her helpful testimony, the detective wonders why she approaches them, and Nicole admits she's afraid for her life since Lana plans to kill Holden and make it appear as self-harm. That day, Holden, alongside Harry, returns to his residence after the authorities release him. Harry hands him a toxicology report stating that Mason was poisoned using an odorless insecticide. He adds that Mason was poisoned prior to the first strike of the blade, making it appear that someone as strong as Holden committed the crime. By the evening, Holden notices something strange in their fireplace's vent. There, he discovers the bloody weapon used on Mason. While Holden scrutinizes it, he hears Nicole's voice from behind, who is aiming a gun at him. Immediately, Nicole breaks out of character and wishes to be called by her real name, Stacy. She happily kisses him, triumphant over successfully executing their scheme. In truth, Holden actually poisoned Mason when he volunteered to make his protein shake. Once Mason passed away, Stacy stabbed him and hid the katana in the fireplace's vent. After kissing, Holden asks how her trip in Venezuela went, and Stacy reveals she easily fooled people into thinking that she is Lana through her disguise. Speaking of Lana, Holden wonders if Stacy is disposed of her body, and she confirms. It turns out that during Holden's last conversation with Lana, he knocked her cold. Then, he ordered Stacy to finish her off. Uncomfortable with a gun, Stacy simply dragged Lana's body to the cliff and pushed her. Her actions infuriate Holden, so he goes to the cliff to check it. Stacy follows him and persistently insists that Lana is gone since she wouldn't survive the fall. Regardless, Holden refuses to be complacent, believing that her body might float up. Stacy explains that she searched the area for over an hour and Lana's body never appeared. Returning to the house, Holden performs his final act by contacting Lieutenant Mormino. He informs him he's recovered the weapon. As Holden's about to leave the room, the lights suddenly turn off and a gun-wielding person emerges. That said person is none other than Lana, who proceeds to shoot Holden in the shoulder. Lana confronts him about his betrayal, and Holden confesses that he killed his father to gain his wealth without injuring his control. Because of his words, Lana realizes how heartless he is, and she begins to regret loving him. Contrary to her feelings, Holden doesn't share it and and admits he used her as a pawn for his scheme. Deeply betrayed, Lana tries to shoot him, but Holden bolts outside of the house. He flees to the garden only to arrive at the cliff. Cornered, Lana shoots him, causing him to fall to the ground. She threatens to shoot him again, but Holden provokes her to end his life. Out of nowhere, a gunshot echoes in the area, and Lana falls down the cliff. Lieutenant Mormino rushes to Holden's location to help him. 
Following their successful operation, Holden drives Mason's prized convertible to Stacy's place. Now rich, the couple plans to flee somewhere far away. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.